All right, shout out my dear brothers and sisters. All right, so let's get into this quick lesson. I always say the lesson is quick, then it wound up not being quick, but Lord willing. But this lesson will be in and out. All right. So all praise to Yahweh by Hashem. Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the hope we elect out there. All right. And this lesson is going to be entitled, You're Missing the Point. This truth is deadly serious. Which really is like a two point, two part title, but I put it all together. Because when it comes to a lot of these mysteries, a lot of these, not even mysteries, a lot of the things that, uh, that, that videos are being made about to some of these wayward Israelites out there in the world, these social media Israelites, they are missing the point. A lot of the truth that comes out in the videos and in various lessons that get brought out, a lot of great points, edifying things that come out, you are missing the point. And the other thought is that this truth is deadly serious. Both of these things are true. This truth is deadly serious. And it just seems like lately, like among the Israelites, you know, those that profess themselves to be Israelites, that they, they don't take it serious. It doesn't seem like they take it serious. They take fringes serious. <laughs> They're fashion. They take the hip-hop album serious. But the truth in itself and its entirety, they, it doesn't seem like they take it serious. You know? And the more experience you get in the, in the faith, the more you'll understand other things that don't have to be told unto you. You know, the men that's got the experience, the apostles, the elders, the elder bishops, and the elders, and then the brothers, uh, older brothers, they have experience that you don't have. And you as new Israelites, they have experiences you don't have. You jump into things, you have no idea what's really going on. And Jake is, is very emotional, really emotional. And all people are emotional, but like a so-called Negro in America, you are one of the most, most emotional individuals that you can come across as a, as a so-called black man. Let's just say it. You are some of the most, and I don't mean it, I mean overly emotional. Well, and, and, and it's a known fact, and I'm learning more and more every day that once emotion comes in with Jake, every, your logic is completely shut off. Once you get embarrassed, or you get cut, or you get made to look a fool, and you get rebuked, everything else is out the window. The scriptures go right out of the window. You know? Now, let's see where we want to start at. And this is kind of like, I've, I've changed the topic a couple of times. You know, one time I was going to deal with the commercialization that's happening with the truth. I'll save that for a later time. Because even now, it's still other other things, other information that, we, that we're receiving about how Jake is trying to commercialize his truth. How you're trying to capitalize off of it and make money. So, I'm sure there'll be something more. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of you know, Hebrew grills <laughs> got rebuked, got all butthurt and went to YouTube, you know, they went to YouTube. See, Jake in the world will tell you that snitching is wrong. And I don't deal with the whole snitch, snitch culture, the word snitching, whatever. Everybody in a different situation, di different circumstances. Sometimes in this world as individuals, you might have to go to the cops. So I don't use the word snitch. But when we're dealing with this truth, in the world, Jake could tell you that they ain't no snit. They look down on snitch. Then you get in the truth. Then your ass turn into, you know, to the biggest crybabies on the planet. And you run right to the damn so-called white man. And you're doing that to get the spiritual fire off you. But going to Esau ain't going to get the spiritual fire off your ass. We're going to keep on loading you down. And we've known for, for a long time that Israelites will flag your damn videos, okay? Now, they've accused us of flagging, but I don't flag videos. Person make a video about me. Whatever, I won't even watch the shit. You know, I want to. The only thing I want to know if a person make a video about me, I want to know scripturally where are they coming from with that because I would be concerned. Because if I go off against the most high, that's deadly serious. So I would like to correct that. 
if they apply it correctly. Most of the time, Jake didn't even apply the scriptures correctly. This is how we know you ain't right. Israel will turn around and use scriptures that got nothing to do with the situation to try to justify themselves. And if you rebuke Jake, Jake will use scriptures about being persecuted. You ain't being persecuted because your ass got rebuked. If you, especially if you're going off. If you're going off and you got righteously rebuked, you are not being persecuted. Anyway, let's get to the scripts. This is, uh, I'm going to read one of the brother's comments here. This is the brother of uh, Virgin Island Straight Game. You brothers, excuse me, I'm just kind of relaxing. I'm in my grandson's little video game chair, but it's very comfortable. And I just, you know, when it comes to the truth, I'm like, I'll just find a spot in the house where nobody is, where it's kind of quiet, where I got a little bit of light. If I have to improvise, I'll do it. I'll use whatever, you know what I mean? And just get it, just bring it out. So, this is Virgin Island Straight Gate with Jeremiah 6 and 10. It says, To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken. And that's a big problem among a lot of these new Israelites. You're so new, you excited, you got the fringe, you so excited to be Israelite. You're just running in. you like, you ever heard the phrase, a bull in a china shop? You got all these valuable dishes in this, in this shop. Right? But if you let a bull in there who don't know anything but running full steam ahead and bucking and jumping around, they're going to break up all the damn dishes. That's what these Israelites are like. They're like bulls in a china shop. They don't know discretion. They don't understand you know, how to be discreet. They don't understand privacy. They don't understand being incognito, moving wisely. They don't understand that. They just want to go, all oh, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. I don't eat pork, all that work. Hollering about you and he telling everybody, ladies in the cafeteria, I don't eat pork. I'm an Israelite. Playing Israelite <laughs> so-called true music on your phone around, around the Edomites. You know, yeah, you saw you going into slavery at work, telling people they're going into slavery. You idiots. Just doing shit. You ain't listening. You're not paying attention, man. You know, but that's what Jake is like. They're, they're, hey, as the brothers put the scripture up, Shah Wan Bashar and all you brothers, your how about you have Rock and Thumb. Right? It says, To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? <laughs> Behold, their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken. Right? They can't, they can hear you, but they don't understand. That's why the Lord constantly said, if you can receive it, to them that have ears to hear, let them hear. Sure, you got two ears on the side of your head, but do you understand or are you missing the point? You're missing the point, a lot of you. Right? It says, Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. As soon as Jake get rebuked, they turn into the biggest victims on the planet. You're the devil. It don't make a difference. It, and these these are like don't have they don't have balance. They don't understand. They they can never be wrong. When they get rebuked with something, they don't know. It's like they don't compute or it doesn't compute in them that that rebuke is coming from the Most High. You can be a brother in the faith. Oh, brother, the Most High is speaking through you. Yeah, how yeah how about you have a shot? Woke me up through you, brothers. If it wasn't for you, brothers, as soon as you rebuke them. Now Satan is the one that sent you. <laughs> Satan sent you now. You rebuked him. Right? Then all that is cut off. That's Jake. Jake in America. Right? As soon as they get rebuked, they fall apart, man. Okay? So, and the Water Brothers for all the great scriptures. Keep it, keep it going. I'm going to try to get into the, you know, to a little topic here. And let's just jump right in with Proverbs 18. I want to read this. This is Proverbs 18, verse 19. It says, A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. In the ancient days, they had these, these cities with these walls around them. And you could not, it was hard to Im impregnate, right? To, I'm sorry, to impenetrate, not impregnate, Salakia. To impenetrate or to break into that strong city. That's what these jakes are like when they get offended. You can't reach them. When they get offended, they don't want to hear nothing you got to say. You rebuke them, they immediately they take it as if you was standing there face to face. You was with what they call doing the dozens. You talk about their mama. They talk about your mama. You talk about a nigga teeth, his eyes, his shoes, his clothes. Till he finally, till somebody break. That's what they think this is. This is like a rap battle. You diss me, I'm going to diss you. Jake said that on the comment board. You dissing other Israelites. First off, I don't diss anybody. I make, I'll make a video to rebuke you and your false doctrine. Something in your behavior that's lacking, I'll do that. But I ain't going to diss you, disrespect. This is short for disrespect, by the way. Rebuking the individual is to save, to help them understand 
where they're going wrong that they might be saved. Can, if a brother don't mind, put the scripture up. Uh, rebuke them sharply, right? That others may fear. That's one that says rebuke them that they may be sound in the faith. If, if we can get that one, right? That's why you rebuke people. Not that you want to hurt them, not that you want to kill them. This social media stuff, this cancel culture, you hating on them. That ain't why we make videos and get on other Israelites. We get on you that you will correct your doctrine, right? That's what it is. We get on you that you will correct your doctrine. Look, look at this guy. Here we go. Let's see. Don't no, blow block him. I want to read this comment. Praise the most high seven. What about the Savior? Is the Savior involved in this? Do you believe in the Savior? Before we even ask your question, praise the most high. Do you believe in the Savior, the Son of the Most High? Because if you don't, we're not going to talk to you. We're not even going to waste our time. Is there any part in the Bible or lost books where it talks about the 144 being five men per town? <laughs> or any part where it says the 144 will protect the one third in the last days? I'm going to say this. Your question is a loaded question. You're being a smart ass on some level. Okay? Okay, well, whatever. I'm going to answer you. But you're not. You, we're not gonna allow you to ask any more. Ask any more questions. Cause what your. But see, you missed the point. You're new. We can tell by the way you ask the question that you're new. But for edification, well, it ain't even edification. I'll answer the question like this: Did you know that some of the hundred and forty-four thousand are already went into the spiritual realm? Did you know that? And I would also have you know that five men per town is inaccurate. Because in Great Millstone, Chicago, you got over 20 guys, brothers. And I'm just using 20. I'm being nice. In Great Millstone, Dallas, there are more than 20 men. In Great Millstone, Phoenix, there are more than 20 men. In Great Millstone, all these other major cities, there are more than 20 men. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, man? See, that comes from a place of hurtness. You're hurting. You're hurting nuts. And nowhere in the scriptures does it say, well, you know what does it say the 144,000 are going to defend the one third? First off, you're off on the on the connection. Only one third of all Israelites in America, Babylon, the Great are going to be saved, and that is including 144,000 and the rest of the one third. When you when you can somebody put up Zechariah 13 and 8 and 9. Let's read those now if we can. If a brother don't you know what as a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and bring it up. Let's let's bring that up. Before we continue on with this, this scripture that I have. See, but that's, but there you go. Jake has no etiquette, no experience, no discretion, and no, no respect, man. We just started up a lesson. Here you come, you know, dragging your chains, your chains of iniquity, dragging on the floor like you're one of them ghosts from Scrooge, you know, talking shit. Does it say anywhere in the scriptures that, or all the lost books? Ain't no damn lost books. The lost books. You should know. You read them. Why don't you know, oh, expert? The brother Amuam Abad got the scripture. I got it too, but we'll read his. And really, man, Jake, you're on the low ass level. Amuam Abad. Zechariah 13 and 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, said the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. When you cut up pie in the parts with the portions, you got. What? That's a fraction. Two thirds are gonna be cut off and die. These are only all the portions is this right here. Cause you hear brothers sometimes say the one third and the hundred and forty four, but the hundred and forty four thousand is part of the one third. They're just the upper part of it. Cause two thirds gonna be cut off and die. Only thing that's left is another fraction of the pie, which is one third. We just read it. Now the third, um, Verse 9, I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined. And I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people and they shall say, the Lord is my power. You see? So there's only one third that's going to make it out of here alive. Some of the one third are the 144,000. And a lot of the 144,000 have already went into the spiritual realm. It ain't 100... See, but this this happens. This is a common mistake when you're new and you're trying to lean on logic, Negro logic, black man logic, Latino, Native American, Chicano logic. <laughs> you're trying to lean on that. Ah, oh, we'll see. Let's see. You got 20 members of this camp. You're trying to count all the camps in each member and then you're trying to carry the one 
to say we real close. It's almost 144,000 brothers. The Most High don't operate like that. He's not going to allow you to know. The Most High didn't even want Israel being counted in the census. Now you think you're a dumbass. You, 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 live in, you live in Delaware, right? Or Cleveland, Buckstown, Ohio, someplace. And you think the Lord going to let your simple ass be able to count up his 144,000. Is that what you thought? That's not how this works. You know, but but that right there show you this is a Jake that's been watching the other groups. Now he didn't hit the wall. He didn't learn enough from them because they can't. They don't got the spirit. He knows Great Millstone has the edification, but he's still offended. So he gonna come and ask us a question like a little bitch. You know, acting. You know, y'all y'all heard y'all heard, heard the question when I read it. That's Jake, man. You know, and it might have been a woman. Show me where the scripts are in the lost books that say 104,000 men per town. Okay. Okay, well, show me in the scripture where a righteous man of the Lord going to be hiding his face, not doing the work, coming on the comment board, heckling those that's doing something. Show me where that is. You can't find it. Now, we're going to continue on because the one-third is, the part of the one-third is 144,000. The rest of them, the rest of the hundred and four, the rest of the one-third, the men, the women, and children that's going to fit, that's going to finish out the great multitude. You didn't see in the scriptures in Zechariah 13 and 9 where it divided the one-third from the 144,000. You didn't see that, did you? You don't hear that. There's going to be one-third. There's going to be a remnant all together. And of the remnant, 144,000, 12,000 each tribe is 144,000. You can't count them. You don't have no idea how many generations or how many uh, uh, centuries went past. You, you, you can count the centuries, but you have no idea how many 144,000 were from each century, man. We know the King David is one of 144,000. Did you know that? Solomon, right? And so on and so forth. There are prophets that are not even written about. Right? Look, GMS in Texas. How about type in GMS Dallas, GMS Houston, GMS San Antonio. See what comes up. Just try it. Try to use the search engine, Jake. Try it. Please try it. Because it does work. The search engine is like, you know, it's like a woman almost. You give it something, it'll give you something back. <laughs> we'll probably be in trouble for saying that, but that's all right, though. It's a joke, but it's the truth. The search engine is like a woman. You give it something, it'll give you something back. I mean, if you type something into it, it'll give you some, some interest back, and then you can you can click on them. Then I can already tell you knew. Son of Thunder, Yaakov. Brothers, you know, do we not know this is a new guy? Yaakov. Yaakov. That's that's Yiddish, brother. The, 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 the uh, ancient Israelites did not speak Yiddish. Okay? Okay, Yaakov. And I'm just ruffling your feathers a little bit, bro. You could be a sincere brother. You know, but you gotta, you know, you gotta learn etiquette, man. Learn etiquette. Alright? Anyway, let's go on. So now, in dealing with what this guy said, I got another scripture. And let's go back to the one I had first. Because really, over here, what the thing is with, with Jake, with uh, or Great Millstone, I ain't going to say despise because that's a powerful word, but we, we it, it, it irritates us when Israelites come around us with that Yiddish shit. Because you're just so fresh, you new, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's right. You can't, be right. you can't be lazy regarding salvation. And I tell you like this, like I always got to go back to that quote that the elder Kazak from Mississippi, you know, when he did that video, you do it for a woman. Jacob, hurry up and get all into it for a woman. You get Vaseline on your face. You know, you put rub parts of your body you ain't touched in years to go meet a stink-ass nigga woman. When it comes to your salvation, Jake don't want to look up nothing. You want to look on the search engine. You won't you won't do none of that. It's enough, it really is enough videos that we've published and put on the internet so that nobody should have a... If you have a question, everybody should go and search it and you can watch videos till your heart was content, till you was learning, but you won't do it. You won't do it because Jake liked the microwave. You like the microwave shit. You, 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 every day you go on the, on the YouTube and you look for a live stream to go and ask questions on instead of just taking your own time, your own pace, and just studying, man. That's what we did. We watched all the videos that the apostles have all the many years. We got into the Gentiles. We got into the seven heads and the ten horns. We got into the, you know, to the beast that Daniel saw. We got all into it, and we just kept studying. That's right. The elder, the elder brother said, Jacob, Google his ass off with some used box. It would be all on different platforms. <laughs> you know, heckling, you know, or not, or not heck, stalking women on social media just to, just for to say hey to you. But then when it comes time for you to look up words, you don't want to do it. 
you know? Anyway, let's go on. So, we can't possibly know. Don't think you can count the 144,000 to that person. Praise the most high 777, okay? And all those that think like that, because that's the thing with Jake. You think you're going to figure this out. Jake got his calculator and his abacus out. You know, the shit with the little... <laughs> Little beads up. Let's see, carry the one. Get the square root. Got the calculator over here. You know, got the compass over here drawing circles and shit with pencil and, you know, trying to figure out how many of the 144,000 been sealed already. You ain't going to figure that out, man. The law don't work like that. What, what's the point of having faith if he's going to give you all the answers? It's not like that. This is not an open book, a, per se, an open book test. Jake all sweating, you know, doing long addition, got the chalkboard, eraser. Dry, dry erase boards and shit. You ain't gonna figure out how many hundred and four thousand is is awakened or have been sealed already. You ain't gonna figure that out, man. And we ain't gonna even go down that road. It's, it's, it's a it's a foolish device. Now let's go. We are gonna go back to Proverbs. Then we'll move on. I'm gonna read this again. Proverbs eighteen and nineteen. A brother is a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contingents are like the bars of a castle. Now that, and I read this scripture for a purpose. Now these, a lot of these Israelites are offended. How dare we say fringes ain't going to save you. Jake making videos now, lying in the title. This one brother now, he might be a sincere brother, but I'm going to put him out there. He made a video entitled, this brother's name was Gabar. Uh, maybe Gabar Karash, something like that. Let me, let, me, let me see if I can tell you what it is. Hold on. He made a video and it pissed me off. The title pissed me off. Why his name is Bar Karash, which really the Bar Krash. His title is Why Can Deal Brothers for Witnesses? That's part of his title. And I asked him on the comment board, can you name any brother that's condemned someone for wearing fringes? That was my first question. Then I put up the scripture, Zechariah. Speak he truth, every man to his brother. I put that up, right? And I asked him another question. I said to the brother, I said, and where is your rebuke for the men that say, if you don't wear fringes, you're going to be put to death? Because that's a lie. If you're so hot under the collar to make video with a lying ass title saying brothers are condemning people for wearing fringes, obviously you must have a rebuke video somewhere in your files where you got on me for telling people that if you don't wear fringes, you're going to be put to death. You got to be able to have a rebuke video for that. Because that's a damn lie. And I put up the scripture of Jeremiah 8 and 10. Right? Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. And cursed be he to keep it back his soul from blood. Because that's a grievous deed. You don't tell men, new Israelites, that you know, uh, Israelites waking up, Gentile, Israelite friends. You don't tell them that if you don't wear fringes, you're going to be put to death. So if you said that, you was going off, right? Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> you was going off if you said that. And we, we'll we get to this in a minute. Okay, I guess you had dreads, I guess. So the brother just saying something came over him and he cut his hair. I'm glad you did that because we wasn't lying to you. See, Jake, like, like I read the scripture, a brother offended is hard to be warned in a strong city, right? Because Jake would get offended and it's just all logic goes out the window. Jake think that I made a video saying that dreadlocks was Shiva Jatas and that it was a heathen custom because I'm going bald. That's, and I hate I hate people with hair. That's why I made the video. <laughs> no spirituality. The most high didn't have nothing to do with it. It was me. I did it because I'm balding. And I hate people with hair. That's what Jake thinks. Because you know why? Because they nuts are crushed. They're offended. Instead of you know looking at the spirituality of the matter. But it's all good. Good for you, brother. You know, good for any brother that receive correction and you go forward. Because we want to see you do good. We want to see you live. We want to see you make it and be saved. But we're not going to tolerate any nonsense. So we're going to use all the tools that the most high gave us. The most high gave us tools to rebuke individuals. We supposed to embarrass you. That's in the scriptures. We can prove that. You're supposed to embarrass individuals. So when this lady got mad and offended, Hebrew Grills was embarrassed, right? And then got on, you know, sent YouTube, however she did it, flagged the video, whatever she said, right? One, and said it was private information being shared. And that shit is public all over social media. 
When she did that, that meant she was embarrassed. And, and by the way, brothers, she dropped that whack opening, you know, wah 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 kadash. Wah, 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 kadash. She dropped that in the new video. She didn't try to say it because she was going off. She realized that when a person do that, they don't really know what the words are. They're doing it as a trend, right? They're doing it as a trend. They listen to others and they don't know what the words are. I ain't going to say nothing if I don't know what I'm saying, right? I just opened up the video. If I didn't know what the greeting was, I ain't going to say you know, something that I'm not sure of. I'm going to understand first and know what the words I'm saying. So when somebody asks me, I can tell them what I'm saying. I just say, hey, shalom, everybody. Peace or whatever. Peace, brothers. How everybody doing? Hi, hey, brothers and sisters. I ain't going to sit there and make a fool out of myself and say no damn wah, 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 kudash. And I don't even know what I'm saying. Right? That's right, brother. The brother said it. Let me get back to more scripts. Because it should turn you to godly sorrow and to repentance. That's what should happen. When you get rebuked, you supposed to, it, it, it do supposed to hurt you, but you supposed to be so embarrassed and say, damn, you know what? Let me go back and, and check myself. Because even when people say, we, we know we right, you know, and we in the right way for rebuking people, we'll still go back and say, well, damn, did I say too much? Damn, did I go off on this? Did I go off on that? You know, whatever. We'll go back and examine ourselves. We don't want to be wrong, right? But Jake won't do that because they missing the point. And they don't understand that this truth is deadly serious. Now, going on, let's move on. And there was a point I was making that I forget, but it's all good. The Lord will never come back. You got a lot of Jakes that's offended. They turn this thing into a color thing. Ain't no way it can be Israelite. Look how they hate us. Um, have you not recognized that the Crips killed thousands of each other? That they hated one another over a color? Yet you still think they Israelites? Your logic has went out the window, man. You were too damn emotional to understand anything, right? That's right, bro. When you cut, it's meant to heal and be strong. And the word is called a double-edged sword. You know how many times we read scriptures or did lessons and they cut us too? And we had to go back and examine ourselves? Shit. You know, it is what it is. Jake could get it one day or not. Now I want to read. And man, I have, I have some other good scripts I want to bring up. Okay, so let's go to 1 Corinthians. We'll go there and read this. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, I want to read. And I'm reading it for a particular reason. Okay? Damn it. What is going on here? Just give me a second, brother. So once Jake get offended, you know, oh, we was talking about the, the, the character that made the video. Yeah, let's, let's, let's deal with that. So the guy that made the video, his, his title was, why are you condemning brothers for wearing fringes? Now, let's look up the word condemn. Let's do that. And I asked the guy on the comment board, show us or, or, or who, name who condemned anybody for wearing fringes. And I asked him the two questions with two scriptures, and he came back and he said, uh, it wasn't against you, brother. I know you to be a very diligent brother. Okay, something to that effect. Yeah, but that didn't answer my question. Your video title said there are brothers condemning men for wearing fringes. Now, if you can't prove that charge, that means you bear false witness. Now, you're going off. Now, you got to go to jail, <laughs> you know, as, I, as you said in that movie. You see? Well, just put up another one. Put up another one. We all, hey, we all go through that, bro. We all go through that. This channel just got off suspension. The other was, it's going to be taken down before long, man. All of our channels are going to be hit. You know, you should look at that as a good thing because that proves you're a thorn in Esau's side. That's why you get flagged, you know. That's a good thing. But this brother said it in his own words. But see, a lot of times, Jake missed the point. You missed the point about fringes. You missed the conversation that's being had about it. And you're a new guy. You shouldn't have never jumped in and put your mouth in it. Now you're guilty for lying because you said men are condemning brothers for wearing fringes. And that is just not true. If it's, has any brother, you can say it in the comment board, has any brother heard any video where a brother people for wearing fringes? First, before you answer, let's look up condemn. Okay. Now, it's got two definitions. The, the second one is really what I want. The first one, it says, express complete disapproval of, typically in public. Now, we have expressed this disapproval of people wearing fringes on all their clothes to their jobs, right? And all different types of things and situations, but not from just for the, for, for the sake of wearing them, to protect yourself. That's what we voice. We said 
If a brother do it, no problem. That's what we said. If you can do that, if you do it, you're not committing the sin if you do it. But it will be unadvised. It will be unwise. You ain't been condemned. Number two, send someone to a particular punishment, especially death. Now, has any of you brothers heard of any great millstone or anybody condemning men for wearing fringes? Based upon the definition we just read. Yep, bearing false witness. Why is it so many overweight brews out here? Gluttony is a sin. Okay, uh, for X seven, prove it according to the scriptures. There's a scripture because you basing that off some Catholic shit. Prove it that gluttony is a sin. Prove it. Prove it, bro. You got a scripture for that? <laughs> That's right, bro. False witness. Emotional lies are dangerous. And 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 like again. The brother seemed like he's sincere, but he jumped into something because he was offended at the notion that men are being brought up and we said the guys are being overrighteous and Jake is. When you tell men they're going to be put to death if they don't wear fringes, you being overrighteous now. Your damn head lined up, right? You doing, you breaking other laws and commandments, but then you're going to bind a man with fringes. When he's just waking up to his heritage, you know, you're going to bind somebody with that. That's going off. And when you make a video and you title it, why are brothers condemning, condemning? That's a heavy, heavy word, right? You could we condemning men for wearing, for wearing fringes. Then he, then he went on in the video, why you getting on men for wanting to keep the law? Now you didn't complete it, but you missed the point. That's the whole object. And the reason I titled it this is because the Elder Yatazak and Elder Karatazak, no, you know, it's Elder Kazak and uh, Brother Yashalam, at the same time, on, a di on two different chats, said the phrase, Jake missed the point. And I said, you know what? Bam, that's the title right there. Y'all brothers said it. Y'all gave me the title. Because Jake missed the point. You missed the, the point, man. T-shirt and fringes, bro. And, and, and you just you just wrong. Just loud, wrong, obnoxious, and ugly. Right around the earth, hollering about a damn, you got to wear fringes. And when a T-shirt is not even ancient garb. Mixed fabric, dreadlocks down your back. Going off, man. Going off. You know, because you don't understand nothing. You missed the point. Have a perfect and just, perfect, just measured out. Yup, but it ain't talking about food. See, you going, see, that, that's, thank you for, for proving it. Thank you for proving it. And I'm going to answer your question, even though you're going off. Now, I'm going to read what he said. First, this guy, thank you for giving us examples to follow. Don't block him, brothers, yet, okay? Now, Fox, Fox or Lit, whatever his name is, <laughs> I can't pronounce this shit. He said, why are there so many overweight brews? That right there show you where he coming from. He, he, he brews. What is a brew? A brew is a beer, man. What are you talking about? So I said, where's the scripture at? Now I'm going to read the scripture he said. Let me just bear with me here while I find it. Okay. So he said, damn, it's gone. Oh, okay. Deuteronomy 25, 15. Listen to how Jake does. But thou shalt have a perfect and just weight. A perfect and just measure shalt thou have, that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy power giveth thee. Now let's go and see what it's talking about. And don't say you try to take it down. How dreads bad? I don't have dread. Why you care? Because dreadlocks are a heathen custom. And we got plenty of videos on it. Dreadlocks, dirty, stinking, long hair, matted, nasty, sour hair is dead. The most high is the God of the living, not the dead. And you have hair down your back like a woman, man. Now if you're on that remedial level, that you don't know that? Are you on that low of a level? You don't understand that? Now, let's look up his scripture because I want to see this in, in its entirety. Jake, you got to stop doing that. Just, just bear with me, brothers. I'm going to, you know, I intended for this video to be one thing, but, you know, as we know, the spirit always take over, man. Jake, Jake is something else. Deuteronomy, was it 25? Yeah, 25 and 15, right? Sundry laws. Right? Listen to this. Showing you that Jake going off. He used the scriptures the wrong way. But what do we say? Jake will use scriptures when they're offended at something. They'll use scriptures to justify themselves and be wrong as hell. Deuteronomy 25 and 13. Thou shalt not have in thy bag diverse weights, a great and a small. Thou shalt not have in thine house diverse measures, a great and a small. It's talking about measurements. But thou shalt have a perfect and just Wait, a perfect and just measure shall that I have, that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy power giveth thee. It's not at all talking about food, you eating food, you being gluttonous. 
It's not at all talking about that. What are you talking about, man? You going off, bro. You see that? See how Jake did that? <laughs> yeah, just, just listen, man. And we got plenty of videos. Put in GMS dreads, dreadlocks. You will see the videos. We back everything up with script down. Let's address him. Now, I'm going to say this. Being overweight is not the optimum thing to be, right? I, myself, I weigh less. I weigh, I've been losing weight lately. I've been working out. And brothers are. But you have to understand that we are under the curses. So we do have overweight among our people. But again, that was meant to be, but that was meant to be a slight. Just like our man, Most High 777, the Most High 777. He was trying to ask a backhanded question. And then we, we, we accept it. We take that from, you know, we have to take that, right? We got to bear with these people. But we're under the curses. You ain't asked. He didn't ask how many, because if we get on a black woman, he'll probably get offended. Why are so many fat-ass black women? Instead of worrying about the guys and the truth, why are there so many overweight brews? <laughs> brews? There's many different Hebrews. Who are you talking about? We are the Hebrew Israelites. Get in the habit of saying Israelite, not brews. This ain't no fat or a trend where you just say brews and you show the most high name to Yah, Right? And you call your house shy yash or whatever. You know, don't do that, man. Be, be serious. It's time to be men. Grow up. Stand up. Time to be men. It's time to be women. When I, you know, with our child, I spank as a child, brother can put it up if you want to. I put away childish things, that scripture. And I may not read it, but it'll be up there. So to answer your question, why are there so many overweight Hebrew Israelites? Because we're under the curses. That's why. But for the most part, most of the brothers do work out. They do work on themselves and we try to be better versions of what we were. Okay, people in general. Okay, well, cool. People in general. You said bruise, I think. I might have read it wrong. I thought you said bruise. <laughs> anyway, it's all good. That's right. Hey, great scripture from the Elder Yachts off. Let's read it. But you was going off of Deuteronomy 25, though. You got to make sure you apply the scriptures correctly. Deuteronomy 25 didn't have nothing to do with the weight of a man's body or woman's for that matter. You got to start, you got to do better than that, Jake. All of us. Apply the scriptures correctly. Because then you go, if you don't apply the scriptures correctly, you're going to be guilty. You misapply the script. You got to repent from doing that. This is GMS. Had no sense of struggle. Well, we can't tell you about people in general. And people in America, Babylon, great, among the so-called white people, which are Edomites, they fucking fat because they got too much. And that's, they're just fat asses, man. Among Jake, we under the curses. Some of the curses that we going to, it don't say particularly, but it is a scripture that says instead of beauty, burning, right? Instead of a girdle, a rent. That's talking about the, you know, so-called black women, you know, being a little out of shape, being on the fat side. But it's also on the men as well. We through as a people, man. That's why we need a savior. Because we through. It's all good. You, yeah, you, well, you did more than misquoted. You put it up like, you know, like you had, you know, you should not do what it was about. You know, gluttony in itself, the word gluttony, like it says, are the seven deadly sins. You don't see that in the Bible anywhere. That's Catholic dogma. Now, don't get me wrong. Doing anything too much is going, you know, you, you it's, it's unadvised. Eating too much, the most I don't, don't want us eating, gorging ourselves, being, you know, greedy, fat asses. No, moderation is always preached. But it's, but going back to that Jake that put up that, that false title, condemning brothers with fringes, or uh, why condemn brothers for wearing fringes? You got to be careful of the words you use, because you can, it's very a very fine line between thou shall not drink at all. Like these churches tell you, you drink liquor, you wrong, you going off. Rabbi News says, you drink liquor, you going to hell. <laughs> no, you you can drink in moderation, but you can't be a drunkard. Very fine line between somebody getting drunk and being a drunkard. I can get drunk tonight. Noah got drunk on the ark, did he not? He got drunk on the ark as a celebration. The Most High said in Deuteronomy, we can spend our money for strong drink if we want to. But anything that you let get a, get a, get a hold of you, now that's a problem. So that's what you got to be careful of. But that's what we're here for. Our apostles and elders taught us the fine points of the scriptures, how to discern, how to properly apply scriptures, how to properly apply life experience and filter it through the scriptures or filter the scriptures through your life experiences. That's part of our job. Uh, brother said, gluttony would, fall, would that fall under being unbalanced? In some level, it would be unbalanced, you know, eating too damn much. The scriptures do, do tell you don't eat too much, don't drink too much. 
Don't play too much. Even if you read too much, if you drink too much water, water, me and Brother Yon, well, Yon was having a conversation the other night about it. Water is the one drink that you need to live. Everything else, you could go without. You need water. You could go without milk. But if you don't have water, you you going to die, man. But did you know something so vital for you? If you drink too much of it, it could be bad for you. You see? So you got to have balance. So you didn't ask a t The question wasn't totally off. Okay, I, YouTube sent me a bullet. And I thought they were telling me you going to take the channel down now. Which is going to come as a matter of time. Now, I want to go to the back to the elder brother scripture that he read. Yep, it was Isaiah 3 where it talks about instead of a, a girdle of rent. Now, this is GMS Hagnos and Strophe, 1 Timothy 4 and 8. For bodily exercise, profit is little, but godliness is profit eight of Salaki, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. And, and just to be perfectly honest, no person that's overweight wants to be overweight. There are some people that have, and I don't like, I'm not making excuses for people, but there are some of our people through the curses that have a gland disorder that they got overweight. Now they can't hardly lose the weight. Just like there's people that want to gain weight, they bony as hell. You got both. These are conditions of, of the curses, man. You know, these diseases that we got. There was a brother that made a video, or one of the brothers from the Mississippi camp. Us being sick is a product of sin. That's, that's a product of the sin. We in these sinful bodies. And, and breaking out of these sinful bodies, it ain't gonna, the law ain't going to help us break out of these sinful bodies, man. Right? Keeping all the commandments is not going to get you a new body. Faith in your have a shot is going to get you a new body. And Jake missed a point because we told you we were not preaching against wearing fringes. We just saying don't make that into adoption. Don't tell men they're going to be put to death. Don't put some other faith on having no damn fringes. And really, it's coming out that that shit is just a market, marketing scheme. Because Jake can't sell no merchandise unless they push. You got to have... If, just imagine if every new Israelite had to buy a whole new wardrobe with fringes on everything and they bought it from them. How much money would they make? They would make a whole lot. You see? So you have to be... You have to watch out for that. Because even in the truth, Jake thinks that when you come into the truth, every Israelite you come across, they're going to be a holy, holy man of the Lord. No, they're not. You still got you still got whores in the truth, right? You got harlots, you got skanks, you got drug dealers in the truth. Jake asked me, could he sell weed in the truth? You got gangsters and thugs in the truth. Those that pack heat. You got villains in the truth. You got sellouts, false prophets, dogs with rotten teeth. You got to watch out. Almost when you're in the truth, you almost got to watch out for these niggas more than the niggas in the world, man. You just that's just the condition that it, that it is. It's the curses on us, man. All right? So let's go on. Now this guy, Son of Thunder James, he changed it from Yaakov to James. And that's better. At the end of the day, if you if you rather use your American name, that's better than using Yaakov, which is, you know, some, you know, it's, it's, it's something. That's right. And the elder y'all just thought, said, we wear our fringes, though. I got on fringes right now, my nigga. Look at that. We wear fringes. We're not against people wearing fringes. But again, with this individual with his title, when you put, why are brothers condemning men for wearing fringes now? That, that right is totally going off. You ought to change the title of that shit, man. Because the, the emotional Israelites are real. Oh, no. Nah. They're condemning. You know, you're telling, that's a whole, a whole other thing right there. All we trying to do is condition you to be more discreet. Pay attention to what's going on. But you missed all that to be upset. Right? Great stuff on the comment board, brothers. I really intend for this lesson to be long. Son of Thunder James said, that's, that's what some camps make it seem like. But James, Son of Thunder James, listen to this. Have you been told, and I'm, I'm going to assume that you haven't been, but have you been told that watching multiple camps will make you be confused. That you want, you want, it's, it's going to mess up your mind. Have you been told that? Because when you're new, you don't really get that. Watch out for watching too many groups. You need to stick with one group. You need to stick with one group. Now, our friend, 4X, 4X Light or 4X Lit 7, he said, that's facts. A certain Israelite group tried to get me to feel condemned 
but not wearing fringes, only to sell me theirs, which is made with mixed fabrics, like you said. You see that? You see? Now, this is the thing. If that was the connotation that this brother was using, that would be one thing. But this guy that made the video, he's making it in the connotation of how we've been getting on Sakara them for teaching people, you know, when they talked about the fringes. We know that some Israelite groups do tell people that, but, but this is the thing. You saying they, they made you feel condemned for not wearing fringes. This individual said we that men were being condemned for wearing fringes. There's a difference, you know. Gotta be, you know, hey, take it with a grain of salt. Take it with what it's worth. Okay? Let's go on, brother. So lock here for my, you know, a lot of lot been coming, you know, coming at us right now. So we dealt with that. Let's go on. We dealt with condemn, right? Now, I want to read this. First Corinthians 2 and 9. Going back to our friend, uh, that asked the question about the 144,000. This is the reason why these kind of types of questions come up. This is 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. And it's, I'm going to start at verse, seven, verse 6. It says, How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Very important. This truth is too high power for low-level thinkers, like Elder Yashawama said, right? This truth is not for low-level thinkers. This is outside the box, and everybody's not going to get this. Verse 7, this is how you get it, though. But we speak the wisdom of the Most High in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom. You know what hidden wisdom is? That's something that everybody's not going to get. It's going to be revealed to them who, who the Lord wills. You can't make yourself get this. You can't say, do that precept, I get understanding, and then try to get every precept and think that the Most High going to lock it to you because you got a bunch of precepts. Nope. Nope. The door can still be closed. This is why Jake take precepts. They think they go together, and they still don't get the meaning. They miss the point because they don't have the Holy Spirit. You got to have the Holy Spirit. But we speak the wisdom of the Most High in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which the Most High ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which the Most High have prepared for them that love him. But, however, but the Most High have revealed them unto us by his Spirit. So that means there's going to be a whole bunch of folks that say, that ain't the right breakdown. That ain't what that means. This means this. Y'all going off on this. You know why? Because they're on the outside looking in. And that's to be expected. That's to be expected. The majority of the Israelites are not going to receive the 100% truth. Jake argues against there being a complete truth. 100% truth is complete truth. It can't be nothing else other than 100% truth to that it would be truth. If it's anything less than 100% truth, you don't really have the truth. You got 99 or 90% 90 truth, and then you got lies. What do the scriptures say? A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So if you don't have the whole truth, you don't got shit. But Jacob still tell you, don't nobody got the whole truth. We beg to differ. Yahweh Shah said, all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. Did Yahweh Shah have the whole truth? Yeah, he did. Did he give it to anybody else on the planet and trust him with it? Yeah, he sure did. How did he do it? Through the Holy Spirit. Right? Through the Holy Spirit. Dealing with us now. And the elect are going to all speak the same thing. And, it, and, it, and it, by the way, the truth is not broken down as this group got 10%. This group. See, we all part of the body. All the different camps are part of the body. The house shot. Even though they offer their doctrine, they got 20, 30, 40. This over here, they got it. No, no, no. No. One group of the elect have the full truth. And they all speak the same thing. Did I say, Jacob, you said it, y'all got it. Did I say that? Did I say they were called Great Millstone? I did not. Do we believe that? Yeah, we believe that. Yeah, we believe that. But in the scriptures, it says that all this one group, the body of your house, shall they all speak the same thing and they have the full truth. That's what the scriptures say, right? That this one group has the full truth. The rest of the people that say that ain't no 100% truth, you think they got it? They don't have it. I can just tell you right off the bat, they don't have it. Their work show it, they don't have it. This is the reason why they'll try to point out little faults and, and flaws in you in your personal life or in yourself or in the way you talk or what, any other thing. But it ain't never nothing 
that's really 100%, you know, that's really true, scripturally true. They'll say about Great Millstone, we teach that it's okay to rape girls, whatever age you want to put on it. And we don't teach that shit. But that ain't nothing in the scriptures that, you can't prove in the scriptures that we said no shit like that, man. That's right, bro. The elect worth, 100%. That's right. You know? You can't prove that. You can't say we going off in the doctrine. How you going to say we going off? We ain't went off on nothing that we taught. You can't prove it scripturally. When you say Great Millstone went off on a doctrine or went off on the scriptures, watch how many brothers show you and prove you wrong that we didn't go off. You just didn't get it. We always address every everything that people come at and throw at us, we address it. We prove thoroughly what the MOTB was and that it wasn't a spiritual mark. And all the videos that we made, they still up. You don't believe that? That's on you. Because this is why you don't... It says 1 Corinthians 2 and 10, but the Most High have revealed them unto us by His Spirit. You got to get it through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yet the deep things of the Most High. This individual that wanted to know about 144,000, he didn't look at it through the Spirit. He looked at it from a carnal, American, black man mind state. Well, I see five men in each town. How could y'all be 144,000? Well, we already answered it. None of us know how many of the elect is already. We don't. We can't tell you that. We just know what the prophecies say. The prophecies say that the angels gonna hold back the destruction until the elect is here. Revelation seven and one through three, until they're activated. That's that's what that's our cutoff. We can't give you the numbers on it. We don't have the analytics on how many of the elect is is awake and alive. Did you know that there's Israelites out there that's of the hundred and forty-four thousand men that are hundred of the hundred and forty-four thousand? They don't even know about the truth yet. Other parts of the world, they could be members of the elect. They don't even haven't learned the truth. Or that they ain't on camera. You don't see them. Even every group that's in America that teaches the truth, they ain't all. We don't know where every one of them at. You have no idea. How could you possibly know that? You couldn't know that. But you're thinking on the level of a black man. That's why you like that. And you ain't thinking through the spirit. Verse 11, for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of the Most High know it. No man but the Spirit of the Most High. You ain't going to be able to get this without the Spirit of the Lord. Too many Jakes are trying to get this truth and understand these deep mysteries without the Spirit. You're trying to read the Scriptures, and you're trying to force us to make you understand. How are we going to make you understand something? Just like you keep telling us to wake up the people. How are we going to wake the people up? Do any of us got an extra Spirit down in the attic? Do we have a Holy Spirit, you know, a Holy Spirit uh, 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 air pump we can... Attach it to you and pump the Holy Spirit in you. We don't have that. And that's the most I want to open you up and give it to you. It don't matter how much we teach you. You ain't going to get it. Bottom line, man. Yup. The Spirit is gathering the elect. We ain't doing it. The Spirit is doing it. All we're doing is doing our part. We're teaching it. And if the most High wants you to get it, he'll open you up. That's it. We have no control over who it is, whether it's a male, female, whether they look like, you know, just like Jake tried to try to take the most High's inheritance or his heritage. And, and put the word Negro on it or black. How you going to do that? You ain't the Lord. You mean to tell me that the Almighty is too, is too powerful, it's too hard for him to put the spirit of an Israelite in somebody else's body that looked like one of the other nations? You think he can't do that? Well, why your mouth open then? You keep talking about all the Israelites is black. They all black, bro. All the tribe of Negroes. You the dumbest, you one of the dumbest individuals walking around on the planet, man. You got to be an idiot. You don't understand anything. Most high is above our understanding, man. He can do anything. He can put the spirit of an Israelite into a body of somebody that don't look like an Israelite. That's easy shit for the Lord of hosts. It's nothing. That's a stupid thing to be arguing over. For what man know the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of the, of the Most High know of no man but the spirit of the Most High. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of the Most High that we might know the things that are freely given to us of the Most High, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You got that? You ain't going to get this. This is not about a grill where you put a line in the grill, you get to wear it and you tell everybody. The Most High didn't give you no gift as a woman to be a gift to the Israelites and your gift is you make you take gold, metal, and bend it to fit people's teeth so they can feel like they're a child of the Most High. And you, just think about it. How dumb is that? This woman going on and on about somebody trying to stop her 
She gonna continue on. You ain't gonna stop me. Stop you from doing what? You think the Lord sent you here? That's your purpose on the planet. Come down here and make sure the Israelites got gold, frick, gold damn grills on their teeth and with, with, a, with a lion in it. You think that's what the Lord sent you here for? <laughs> you really ain't got it. In a, in a, in a grill, that's some, that's some Negro shit from America, man. Now, we speculate, brothers speculate that King Solomon may have had gold teeth. And that would fit. An immaculate king with gold plates and gold silverware and, 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 and you know, so rich and decked out, he might have gold teeth. He might. But he's a king. The richest man. If you, if you had that much gold, well, our, our dogs would have gold in their hair if we had that much money. Would he not? But you going on and on about it. Like that's something like, like for now. Here is the ministry of the prophecies here. <laughs> and it's like waking up at an all-time high and your ass somewhere in the corner going on and on about some damn grills. One of these things is not like the other. You on a low level. On the big ass these these on her eyes. Hey everybody. <laughs> Wawa -wa Kadash. I'm here to bring out the truth. You know, shut your ass up. Lord ain't dealing with you. Feather dust on your damn face. You mad now. Well, I took the video down. Hey, may you, you know, may you choke on them eyelashes, man. Them damn snuffies. Shit crazy, man. <laughs> and y'all forgive me. We get a little silly, but this shit is dumb, man. You know, you think, yo, you think the like the most high is up there in heaven now. Dude. Them men now, you got to get on them, son. They stopping my servant from sending forth the grills, the righteous grills. Yeah, okay. Okay, you missed the bus. You riding the short bus to school. Verse 13, which things also we speak not in man's, in, in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of the Most High, for they are foolishness unto him. For us to break down to you new bodies when you can't even understand and receive the fact that your salvation is not based upon how many commandments you keep, even though you can't keep all the commandments in captivity. It's virtually impo impossible to do it in sinful flesh. But you want us to go into break down the deep mysteries of you? It's foolishness under you because you can't get it. You're still black. And the big problem I see among Israelites, and I'm going to address this in a minute, most of them are not born again. You, you ain't new. You the same nigga. You still TT from down the block. You your ass still you still Kiki. Kiki, do you love me? That's you. You that's you who Drake was singing about. You know? You that's you who Jake Drake was singing about. Your ass still Kiki. You the Hebrew is like version of Kiki. That's who you are. That shit on your head and big ass out. You know, these things. Come on, man. Grow up, Jake. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of the Most High, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You got to have spiritual discernment. A woman making grill should have known. If you spirit, you should have known. Well, damn, you know what? The Most High is telling me something here. I didn't know, you know, that was going off. Because cause prior to coming into the truth, guess what I thought? I was in Atlanta. And I had an, me, and my, me and my cousin had an independent record label, a little short testimony. And he was, you know, we would use the computers a lot. I had never really been on the internet like that. I didn't even know what the internet was about. I just knew I was going to be a rapper. I was going to, you know, South Carolina didn't have no rappers on the map. I was going to be the first one to be the real South Carolina. I'm going to put South Carolina on the map. I had a plan. I'm going to be, I, I was making beats doing all this. I said, yeah, I got a couple of bros I know, a couple of guys. I'm going to produce them in South Carolina. When the next time they make a, uh, Welcome to Atlanta where the gangsters play. We're going to have a South Carolina version of it. And then I learned the truth. Then I found out, I thought I was going to be a Hebrew Israelite rapper. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, we the Israelites. I went on the internet. My cousin's at work. I found out about the truth. Then I started thinking, I'm going to be a Hebrew Israelite rapper. I even did a couple of songs like that. Start putting Esau in the words, all that. About us being the 12 tribes. We came from the slaves, all that. And then I started learning that I wasn't going to be able to do that and mix it with the truth. Was I disappointed? Yeah, I was disappointed. Was I a little bit crushed? Yeah, a little bit. Because I ain't have shit else. That was the talent I had. I had talent to do that. But I couldn't do shit else. But guess what? I didn't try to force my way. I let the Most High... Well, I didn't let. Excuse me for saying it like that. But the Most High put the Spirit on me to understand this is the path you're going to take. So now instead of spending hours on end in the studio, putting together songs and beats, and trying to force my way and make it part of the truth, 
I spent hours doing lessons. Use that creativity to come up with titles, to do shows, to come up with different ways to bring it out. That's what we do. We ain't trying to use, you're going to try to use your talent in the world some kind of way now. The Lord that gave me a talent. I, I can flip dope. I got to do it for the truth. How? That don't fit. Making grills is not a talent that, 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 uh, that, that can be converted to the truth. If you're a dentist and you fix people's teeth, you can fix Hebrew Israelite teeth. You can be Hebrew Israelite. That's a dentist. But don't be a Hebrew Israelite dentist. You're just a dentist. And if brothers in the truth got problems with their teeth, you can help them. Why you do your regular job? If you're the lawyer in the world, maybe, maybe there may be a place where you could be still be a lawyer, practice law, but you're going to keep that separate from your life. You ain't going to go to court as a lawyer in the world. You're an Israelite. You got fringes on your damn suit. You're a lawyer. No, you're not going to do that. You have to understand and learn. You got to figure out how your gift, if it translates to the truth or not. If it doesn't, you can't use it. You can't use it. You was a bouncer in the world. Now you're going to be a bouncer. You're going to go to the camp. You're going to stand there. If anybody come up, you're going to beat the shit out of them for your how about shit, your how about shot. You can't do that. You can't do that. Right? You you pimping girls in the world. You was a pimp. Now you in the truth. You're Hebrew Israelite pimp. What you're going to do now, you're going to hook the brothers up with wow. You're going to call your brothers and hook them up with. You can't do that, man. The most high is the great matchmaker. It ain't your job. Your main focus in this truth is to teach to edify, to find out what your job is in the ministry, man. You can use it for the ministry, great. If you can't, you got to stop doing that thing. You're trying to force your way. You're going to make the most. I'm a Hebrew. And instead, now, what I do, I'm a Hebrew Israelite artist. I draw pictures for the truth. And while that may be good, some brothers could use your art, but that's not helping anybody learn the truth. You got to teach the truth, and then in your regular, you know, you can still draw paint and do pictures, but ain't nobody going to wake up from that shit. You drew, a, or you drew a picture that was so nice. Somebody saw, man, who drew this? Surely the Spirit of God hath touched thee. I want to repent and convert. That shit ain't going to happen, man. The same thing been happening from the beginning. The word of the Lord is waking up individuals. That's how the elect is going to be saved. Let's read. If a brother don't mind putting Isaiah 34, 16. We always read that. Let's read it now, please. That's right, brother. Jake, you're doing some simple shit. But again, with the title, you miss the point. You miss the point. You must decrease. He must increase. This is less about you, more about your how shy. Preach about his salvation. Preach about what he did for us, our people. And you tell them, right? Jake, still come on the combo. Can you tell me? Can you write me a letter? Show me how to, how to, how to witness to my family. Your family ain't going to get this, bro. We make the videos for all of that. Just turn them to the videos. If you got one cousin, y'all close, you can tell him a little stuff about the truth. And if he be receptive, you tell him a little more. So that's the same road you take. You tell your family, you are going to become a black sheep. You don't want to listen to us? Okay, don't. You'll find out. GMS Howard Carr. Shout out one, brother. Isaiah 34, 16. Listen to this. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. None, uh, no one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate for my mouth. It hath commanded and his spirit. It hath gathered them. The spirit of the Lord is going to do the gathering. You ain't waking nobody up. You don't have the power to wake anyone up. You missed the point. You think I'm, I'm, I'm wake them niggas up. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're going to take your ass to the barber shop. Now you got to get a new barber because the old barber you had, that nigga was a Muslim. And he don't like you no more now. That's what you're going to do. You're going to alienate people. You're going to turn people off. You're going to be an asshole at the end of the day. And if you don't be careful, you'll wind up falling out the truth yourself. If you don't pay attention and be more diligent and be how, and learn how to be discreet. Because these things are stumbling blocks on you, man. Jay could get real messed up over nobody liking him anymore. They never liked you to begin with. But now that you're in the truth, they really don't like you. A spiritual man understands that everything is spiritual. If people are suddenly... And you hadn't said anything to them, but they noticed a change in you. And now they don't want to be around you. That's that's scriptural. They shall cast you out. What would it be? Uh, uh, separate you from their company for the, for the Lord's sake, for the Son of Man's sake. That's to be celebrated. That's to be expected. Don't think you're going to be in this troop and you're going to be popular around your family, man. As much as y'all brothers and sisters, much people say they like watching our videos and this and that. Right? We're not popular among the world. 
I have members of my family that I, I never hear from. My parents, they'll say, you know, of course, they're my parents. They'll say, how you been? Where you been? Why you ain't called? Well, you know, this or that. Are we fine? Whatever. But most of, most of the time, you don't talk to people in our family that much. But it ain't because y'all in a cult. You don't talk to your family. No, they ain't like that. I'm, very, I'm, I'm at peace with all my family. We just don't talk that much. Because they know that they're Baptists and they eat catfish and pork and celebrate Christmas. And I don't do that. So they're uncomfortable around me all the time. But I go around them and just be at ease because I already, I warned them all already. I'm done. I have got nothing else to say to them about what they're doing wrong. I know they follow that Negro Christianity shit. It don't matter to me. It ain't got nothing to do with me. That's their life. When you come into this truth, you, after you while you get the experience, you realize and know you got to live and let the other people do what they're doing, man. Everybody got a lot of role to play. The most highly one conducting this. Ain't no problem. You're not going to be condemned or destroyed because you didn't tell every person you know that they was a Hebrew Israelite. The most I got prophets already set up, man. The most I got the people's plans, their lives already planned out. It's been predestined, just like yours is. If he want them to get the truth, he'll wake them up. It ain't because they did not wake up because you didn't spend three hours talking to your favorite cousin about Esau and the nations. That ain't why they're going to be destroyed if they get destroyed. It ain't got nothing to do with you, man. The most I didn't, didn't choose them. That's what it's, that's what the problem is. Understand that. That's right, brother. What about not casting pearls to swine? What about that? Right. Absolutely, Elder. Elder Yazizat said that. So let me get some of y'all brother scriptures. Y'all been patient. You're doing, you're doing great. Man. And, and you know, when we I didn't win and dealt with so many things now, I'm like, I'm whew, I'm about beat. This is Virgin Island Straight Gate. Baruch 2 and 30. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. This is going to happen with or without you. With or without me, this is prophecy. Prophecy is going to be fulfilled regardless. Now people have been stiff-necked. But now the awakening is, is starting to occur. It's been occurring. It's only going to increase more and more. And if you, you know, if the most high didn't choose the individual, they ain't going to be a part of that awakening. Period. Period. This is Jim S. Harakar, Philippians 2 and 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always have you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. This does not mean that you don't have to listen to nobody, that there's no order required, that you don't got to listen to no man. I don't got to take order for nobody. I'll just sit over here in the corner and wait for the Lord to come. You're going to be destroyed. Clearly, the most high set up leaders. There are leaders. Let's prove that. They don't like to believe nothing that we say. I ain't believe nothing you say unless you read it out of the scriptures. Oh, well, we will. But then will you believe it then? If we read it out of the scriptures, you probably won't. If you don't like it, it goes right back to that emotion. The emotional ass Israelites, man. Jake. All that damn emotion. Let's prove that the most high sent leaders. And lead, if, if the most high sent leaders, he meant for us to follow them. Can a brother put the scripture where Paul says, Follow me, even as I have followed you. How shall I? I don't know if I'm saying it right, but if you know where it's at, please post it. Now, this is going to be Second Esdras. The prophets are the, I'm going to give you the answer. The prophets are the leaders, okay? The Most High sent men here for us to follow them while they follow him, and likewise, so on and so forth. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's always been that way with the Israelites. And there are qualifications for who those leaders would be. What man should you look at and follow him? What is he doing? I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a few clues. If you've never seen the nigga face, don't follow him. If all he does is sit behind the computer and he don't teach you on the street, don't follow him. He wasn't sent by the Lord. The Most High never had any prophets that didn't go outside that people couldn't approach them, touch them, ask them questions, find out what they needed to do. The Lord ain't secretive like that. He, he gave his secrets to a servant to prophets. For what reason? To give to the rest of the Israelites, man. And the most high ain't doing nothing in secret. There ain't going to be no secret rapture where the Lord going to come, shh, be quiet. Got to get my Israelites out of it. No. This is going to be loud and everybody going to see it. Everybody going to know it. Okay? The Lord know why he got to sneak. He's almighty. I don't have to sneak to do shit. I take what I want. I'm the Lord of hosts. That's how the Lord coming. Right? That's right. The water, brother. Virgin Island Straight Gate, 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. 
be ye followers of me, even as I also am of the anointed. Now, you got a, a thing that's brewing lately with these rebellious sons, known as Sakari, dagger men, that they got Israelites questioning Paul. Paul's writing, Paul teach. You believe Paul more than how and shy. Paul is, Paul is. Look at, listen to this, man. This book is a holy book. No words in it were in it because uh, no words in it are anything that's not inspired or written directly by the Almighty Himself. You understand that? If you if anybody, any Israelite tell you that this this book, there's something wrong with it. Don't now the word of God is not the Bible, but the word of God is found in the Bible. What's the rest of it then? What is the rest of it? Can we get them scriptures, brothers? We know this is the word of the most high right here. And it ain't and it don't need another part of the lost, the lost book. Can you get that, can you get that lost book of Joshua where he was fighting the Anakins and he showed what he did the and he pulled their arms off? That shit ain't scriptural, man. That ain't part of the Bible. Here's the leaders. First, Salakia. Second Ezra, chapter 1, and verse 38. And now behold, brother, Salakia. And now, brother, behold, what glory, and see the people that come from the east, unto whom I will send for leaders. Who the people that come from the east? is speaking of the Israelites. Unto whom I will give for leaders Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Oseas, Amos, and Micaeus, Joel, Abdias, Jonas, and Jonas, Nahum, and Abacut, Sophonius, or Sophonias, which is Zephaniah, Agias, Haggai, Zachary, and Malachi, or Malachi, which is also called an angel of the Lord. These men were leaders. Today, did the Most High leave you down here in captivity in a place that's not yours? Only to wake you up to the truth now. He waking up all these Israelites, but ain't no more prophets and there are no more leaders. How dumb is that? I am the Lord. I change not. The Most High ain't never going to do things different. He always had prophets before. Now you got to identify through the spirit. Who are these men? Who are these prophets that the Lord sent? The ones he sent with 100% truth. Who are they? Where are they? See, instead of coming on the comment board trying to be a smart ass. You know, trying to be a smart ass. Uh, can you show us in the scripts or in the lost books where the, the 144,000 going to be five men per city? You're a dumb ass. It's going to take me a while to get over that one. Okay, our friend 4X Lit 7 is smoking weed of sin. Forgive me, this is a basic question. The, bro the elder brother, Jim S. Hagnos, and the strophe answered you. He said, yes, smoking is a sin. He didn't notice he didn't say smoking weed, he said smoking. Smoking anything is a sin, man. Uh Brother Daniela from GMS Pittsburgh, GMS Yasharala Paris Sanfrey said, question is Paul question is, does Paul's letters line up with the rest of the Bible? Yes, it does. And it does. It does. And for more edification on the the weed thing, you can put in GMS, marijuana, or whatever. See what you get. See what you get from it. Like I said, that YouTube search engine, if you give it something, it'll give you something back, okay? Now, I want to also get, let's just get a couple of scriptures to show you. The Most High's Word, it's un, it ain't got no mistakes in it, man, okay? Now, over the period of time, you had these, right, these, these reprinters, they try to do their own thing, but the Spirit of the Most High cannot be defeated, and it's in this book, or he uses it in, 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 union with, in unison with this book. You read the scriptures. Why is that? You can read the scriptures and you can get more out of it than the regular average Israelite can because of the spirit that's working with you and in you to understand it. It's the same thing that when the Edomites try to read it, they say Gentiles just mean this. We know fully what all that means. We know what Babylon the Great, where Babylon the Great is, who it is. We know who the Great Whore is. We know who, you know, who Esau is today. Why do we know that? We know it because the spirit of the Lord is working with us. Okay? We know these, that's what the Lord revealed it unto us. Psalms. Oh, uh, great. Okay, let's read this. Dealing with the Bible. Psalm 68, verse 11. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. Who gave the word? 
The Lord gave the word. The Lord Almighty, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, he gave the word. How was it written? Let's see. How was it written? Great was the company of those that published it, but how was it written? 2 Peter 2. Sorry, 2 Peter 1.19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Why does it say that? Because the Bible interprets itself. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little, there a little, right? To those that not meant to get it, that they might fall backward, be broken, ensnared, and taken. This is how this happens. The precepts that unlock themselves unto you, to everybody else, they're stumbling blocks. And they start saying dumb shit. Dumb things that don't, don't even. It was a snake that was crawling in the garden and talked to a woman, made the woman eat an apple. Then she gave her husband an apple. Then he bit the apple. Then they both fell asleep or whatever. It's ridiculous. That's what they get from it. What do you get? You get more than that from it. You've been taught better than that. See, in the end, these, these flying serpents going to come, and they got these different heads. They're going to be eating people. Then these UFO, these flying things going to come. They're going to take people up. They're going to eat them. That's what they get from it. But we know the chariots were sent to take up the elect, and we say spaceships. These fire flying serpents, these are the nuclear missiles that's going to come and devour, eat, devour Babylon, which is America. We see it plainly. We don't get it because they don't got the spirit. That's why. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. You hearing it? Are you missing the point? For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of the Most High spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. This is how this whole book was written. This is where it came from. The, the words put in the Bible were given through the inspiration of the Almighty. And he put those visions in those men's heads. He bothered them. He bugged them. He gave them dreams they couldn't escape from. They were so vivid they couldn't do nothing but write it down. They were under the command of the Lord. He moved men to do this. You got niggas coming around with a fitted hat on telling you that the Spirit of the Lord or that there's words in this book that are not the word of the Most High. What are you going to listen to them for? What are you listening to them for? Some guy that thinks he's a rapper, right, with his pants hanging off, with a fitted hat on, with black love on it, <laughs> telling you that the words of Paul are not the words of the Almighty. Come on, man. You got to be, you are stuck on stupid if you believe, but you know what? But you willingly ignorant. That's the scripture call you, willingly ignorant. Let's read some of the comment board. See what brothers got. Y'all killing me. That's right. That's right, Elder, because they missed the point. That's what it's all. Jake missed the point. You missed the point, Jake. This is a mutable description in Luke 1 and 7. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Two points. The Most High speaks to his men, the prophets, Hosea 12, 9, and 10. And then on top of that, is they've been since the world began, and the Most High never changed that. You think now in the most corrupt, worst kingdom that's ever been on the planet, most powerful too, the worst captivity his people ever experienced, the Most High going to be so cruel to you, he's going to wake you up to your heritage now, but he ain't going to give you prophets like he did in the old days. You gonna gotta, you got to figure this. You on your own this time, Israelites. You think the Lord did that? You got to be an idiot. The most I don't operate like that. But but he loves you so much. He's full of, he's all about love, but he didn't send you prophets like he did in every captivity. And he did in all times, it was always prophets. Man, since the world began, there were prophets. But this time, he's going to do something different. Even though he changes not, he's going to do it different this time. You learn that shit from Esau, man. Let me read you something right quick. This is Revelation 18. And, and I ain't heard a scoffer answer this back yet. Those that say ain't no more prophets, you can't answer this one. Revelation 18 and 20. And if you give an answer, it's going to be incorrect. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets. For the Most High hath avenged you on her. The her is Babylon the Great. All the ancient prophets were passed on and gone by the time Babylon the Great came into existence. 
Why is the Lord going to avenge the prophets and the holy apostles on Babylon the Great, but they never had nothing to do with it? They never even went there. That would be unrighteous by the Lord. He don't punish individuals for shit that they didn't do directly. He don't do that. So why was he doing it then? He's not. There were prophets in Babylon the Great. There were kings and, and princes and princesses in Babylon the Great. They just didn't know who they were. There was prophets and great men of the Lord in Babylon the Great. There are now. You just don't know who we are. That's just bottom line. If you can't receive that, it's because you missed the point and the Lord ain't dealing with you. You see? GMS, the spirit still in us. Jeremiah 315. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. You want to find the prophets? Who give you all the knowledge and the understanding? Who give you the 100% knowledge and understanding? We do not try to recruit people because we want you over here with us. So we can say we got the most numbers. Nope. It ain't about that for us. We just want to tell the message. We want to preach the gospel. We want to tell you that the Lord come. We want to break down the scripture to you because that's what we do. If you can't receive it, hey, nice knowing you. We'll see you. We'll see where you wind up at. That's it. We don't want your money. We don't need nothing from you. Do you supposed to give money? Yeah, you're supposed to. But you work it out with the Lord. We ain't gonna hit us up. Hit us on the cash app, family. Hit us on the what's the thing called? On the GoFund. Hit us on the GoFundMe, family. We just need a few hundred more dollars so we can open up this school. Nope, not doing that. You in school now? Not doing that. We don't give a damn about that. The Most High gonna give us everything we need. If you never give us a penny, we ain't worried about it. The scriptures say the Most High will give every needful thing in due time. Now I'm paraphrasing that. In due season. Right? Now some of the comments I'm seeing that I'm not seeing here. Just hold tight, brothers. That's right. El Apostle Bar. Daily edification 4. Give us this day our daily bread. We get that, we good. We got a roof over our head, we good. That's right, El Yabzak said it. None of those pastors are women. Yeah, he said it. Yeah, I said it. None of them pastors are women. We know that that native, that Negro American flesh don't like that. That African flesh don't like to hear that. You want to take up for the woman because you are, you know, you're a simp, but you gotta take it up with the Lord, man. You can't show us one woman preacher in all the scriptures. You can't even do it. Do it for us. You can do it. <clears throat> what about Deborah? She wasn't a preacher. <laughs> She wasn't teaching in the church. What it said were prophetesses. Look up the word prophetess and show me where it says she was a woman teacher filled with the spirit of the Lord teaching men. He ain't never seen that. And as El Apostle Gabar always says, look at the 12 disciples of our Lord. Which one of them was a woman? We'll wait. You can't do it. Can't give us any, any answer to none of them are women. This is Kingdom Driven 144, Isaiah 30 and 20. I love this scripture. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. What that mean? Your eyes going to see the teachers. Listen further and it gives you the rest. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it, when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. When you go out into the streets, into the lanes, into the cities, and to the chief place of concourse, guess what? There's going to be men there telling you, you got to repent. This is what you're going to be doing. Put down them cigarettes. Stop doing that. Listen to the word of the Lord. The Lord said this. America going to be destroyed. Who was the only one? Here's a big hint and a clue. For those that don't think there's no more prophets. Before the pandemic hit, who was telling you way back when, leading up to the pandemic all these many years, that there were going to be pestilences coming? That the Lord was going to do something nasty. That he was going to send plagues on the earth. Who told you that? The preacher in the church wasn't telling you that. Them men with the garments that you hate. Them men that was getting on people. They told you that. I, my own self, even. Coming into the truth. We probably said that every week for, for 12 years. Every Saturday, I've told people that the Lord was going to send plagues. He finally sent the nasty plague. He made, and, and we learned that. They're going to, well, our apostles going back 30 years, 25, 20 years, 10 years, 15 years, 12 years. Men have been saying that, man. You think there ain't no more prophets on the earth? We knew that was going to come in. We're telling you now. The Lord going to destroy 
Babylon the Great with nuclear destruction. There's going to be a World War III. There's going to be FEMA camps. There's going to be race wars, riots of all sorts, and more pessimists coming. That's what the Lord said. El Apostle Gabar, Daily Edification 4, Apostle Paul mentions Barak. He never says anything about Deborah, so much for her prophetess office. That's right. Even when you read Hebrews 11, it talks about it. The time of family of Barak and Gideon and Samson. Why? He ain't mentioned Deborah. I don't believe. You got to understand. If you, and if, unless you miss the point, you will get, you will understand that. It's just easy, man. If the Spirit give it to you, it's easy. This is Daily Edification 4, 1 Timothy 6 and 8. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. And it goes on to say, for godliness with great gain. You know, godliness with contentment is great gain. So like, that's what you pose it. Hey, daily bread, right? And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. You see? And, and, and believe me, the times are coming. If you come upon a time, you got a roof over your head. And you got food for the night and a place to sleep, you're going to be more than happy. Because there's a lot of perilous times coming, you know? A lot of things are coming down the pipe. So, you know, I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much going to shut it down. I mean, I read what I, you know, what I pretty much wanted to read. I'm going to read this last one. This is 1 Corinthians 1 and 18. It says, the wisdom of the Most High, right? For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. We have scoffers come on here and say little shit. It's foolish to them. Right? Why? Because they're going to perish. The scripture said it. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of the Most High. Understand the connotation there. It ain't saved like in the church. I'm saved. You're not just eating pork, catfish, doing all kind of wickedness, but you saved. You're a person of God. No. No, you, you're not like that. You're not. Elder Apostle Bar had another thought. He said, our, poor, our Lord became poor to make many rich. That's in the scriptures. He became poor to make many rich. Okay? He rejected the pleasures of sin for a season. Oh, that was Moses, rather. Slack you on that one. So going on, 19, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. All those degrees, the educated, the most high didn't choose them. He chose men of his own choosing. And some of us brothers are educated. You know, there's some brothers got bachelor's degrees, master's degrees. They have educated. You know, they, they got degrees. I'm not one of them, but there are brothers that are like that, that are like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. The most High got them doing what he got them doing. Daily edification for 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, that he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Woo. Heavy. Beautiful scripture. You know, beautiful scripture. I will read it again. For ye know the grace of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. We're going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. He is, is going to inherit the, the throne, and we're going to be heirs and joint heirs along with him. Everything he gives, we get a percentage. Right? Literally. We're going to be in the kingdom with him. And he said he's going to share it with us. That's a reason to be happy. But if you miss the point, you run around the earth talking about fringes. And as I asked the question, no scoffers came on the comment board and said anything. In Matthew 22, does the wedding garment have fringes on it? Still hadn't heard anything back. But it's whatever. I didn't, I didn't address it to anybody specific. But you deep, deeper than deep Israelites that want to keep all the commandments that you say you can... Because we all want to keep them all, but we can't. But you say you can. So does the wedding garment in Matthew 22 have fringes on it? Yes or no? Daily Edification 4, Luke 12, 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's right. Fear not. The kingdom is for the flock. Right? For the little flock. Little as in what? As in comparison to the untold millions of Israelites is going to die. On this side in Babylon the Great. Like our friend came on the comment board and said, show him in the scriptures or the lost books where the 144,000 is going to be five men per city. You know, because yeah, he missed the point. 1 Corinthians 1 and 20. I'm going to start at 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise 
and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Had not the Most High made, made foolish the wisdom of this world? The people of this world, the great people you see on TV, the prestigious authors, he wrote this many books, and he's this, and he's got this doctorate degree, he's a doctor of divinity. They don't even got the truth. They still run around the earth calling the Son of the Most High Jesus, for goodness sakes. They don't have the truth. Hath not the Most High made the foolish, have not the Most High made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of the Most High by the world, Salakia, for after that, in the wisdom of the Most High, the world by wisdom knew not the Most High. It pleased Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Why does it say by the foolishness of preaching? Is preaching foolish? No. But compared to the wisdom of the Most High, how he can snap his fingers and, and open up every Israelite and make you get the truth, this is a light work. By the foolishness of preaching, it pleased the Most High by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. While you may think it's a foolish act, the Most High deems it as not such. It's, he says by the foolishness of preaching, meaning compared like with him. He could just wake us all up. But he wanted to do it this way. He already got it set up. Who is going to receive the word? But how they going to receive it? Through the preaching of his word. That's how they going to receive it. But he already knows who they are. It ain't no hard task for the Lord. Nothing is too hard for the Almighty. Okay, so I'm going I'm to read a few of these and then I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. This is a... Uh, <laughs> this is a uh, daily education for Elder Apostle Gabar, 1 Corinthians 3 and 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. Even as unto babes in the anointing, some guys just don't get spiritual language. And he's absolutely correct, as they taught us. They can't get the spiritual language because it's not given unto them. Yeah, the apostle, you're burning it up. John 6, 63, is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spiritual and they are life. For those that say that the Bible is not the word of the Most High, well, what the how shall I say? He just, he just, we just read it. The, it is the spirit that quickened the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And they recorded in this book, the words that our Lord spoke. Right? We know that. He says, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. But if you miss the point, you don't even get that this is deadly serious. We're going to leave it right there, brothers. The water for everybody coming and joining in. It went on a little longer than I thought it would, but hey, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. The water for all the support, for all the scriptures, for all the love. This is El Apostle Gabar, 1 Corinthians, and we'll shut it down on this. 1 Corinthians 2.13, which, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That's right. That was so good, it wanted, it wanted to come out again. Absolutely. So to water everybody, to water El Apostle Gabar and all, anybody else out there, any other El Apostles in the background, all the, the elder bishops, the elders, the big brothers, and the sisters, man. All right? The water, everybody, for joining in. We'll see you again soon with another lesson, Lord willing. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekha Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of the great millstone. And shalom to the Holy Lit. All right? Shalom.